Bob and you're welcome back to another YouTube video and today we're taking a look at another film review and today we're going way 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 back in time all the way back to 2010 and going into the Batman era of animated movies we are going into Batman Under the Red Hood this is obviously taking into account the actual story and origin of Red Hood and putting it into a sort of animated feature film and I'm going to be honest after watching a couple of the other animated Batman or DC related movies I had to watch this one because Red Hood is in my top five favorite DC characters along with Harley Quinn, Man Bat, Flash and Nightwing. They are just some of the highest sort of characters in regard to story and potential. So we're going to get into this one by of course going into what Google has to say about the movie and then what I think of the movie as a whole. So Google says, Red Hood, a villain who knows Batman every move, takes Gotham City by firestorm as he begins cheating it and cleaning it with the efficiency of Batman. The Joker then resources to taunt this old nemesis Red Hood. So the movie starts with Robin being kidnapped by the Joker and being beaten to death with a crowbar as Batman is too slow in his Batmobile to get to him in time and when he does get there, the building explodes and he actually dies. We then have like a magical time skip of Joker in Arkham and the Red Hood getting together Gotham's most wanted drug lords, drug dealers, and he's stealing sort of competition and money from the Black Mask, who we also see in Birds of Prey, but as of right now, he is the biggest drug lord in Gotham. So, with Red Hood taking most of his shit, there is a friend, friendly little rivalry that they have, with each one stealing each other's cargo, killing each other's men, and they have a big, 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 big drug fight, with Red Hood winning pretty much 90% of the time. The Black Mask then gets scared and then brings in the Joker, which has been in Red Hood's plan all along. That's what he wanted. He wanted the Joker to come out and play, and New Black Mask was the only one to be able to get him out of Arkham. But Batman's story, however, follows him and Nightwing chasing down the Red Hood, following him, tracking his every move, trying to find out who this masked murderer is, and going back to the origins of Joker and going to check Joker to see if he knows what to do with it. The Joker then says no, he doesn't know who this is, and then gets escaped out of Arkham. And then that's where we are now, with both stories coming together, with Red Hood revealing his identity as Jason Todd and Batman working it out. And then Red Hood gives Batman a choice. Kill Jason and be end it all, or kill the Joker. Which is something he should have done a long, long time ago. But Batman refuses, because if he kills, kills the Joker, then he's going to be no better than the Joker, and it's a dark, deep, dark, deep down, deep, dark, deep down pit that he will not be able to come out of when he kills the Joker. He doesn't want to cross that line, because once he does, he'll never be able to cross back over. And that is pretty much where the movie ends, because Batman refuses, and he beats the shit out of both of them, and puts Joker back in Arkham. That is the end of the movie. Ta-da. Pretty shit ending. I don't like how it just ended with like both of them getting away and none of them dying. I thought it'd be a lot cooler if Jason actually did shoot the Joker, but obviously if they did that, then Batman would not be able to shoot the Joker. We have a little bit of Raja Ghoul in here as well, a character which I'm not too fond of, but he is the whole reason that Jason came back, so we, we gotta love him here. My main criticisms are with the voice actors, just with Joker in general. Like, I don't like Joker's voice actor. I'm used to Mark Hamill doing it because he's such a good Joker. And I do believe he was doing it back in 2010, so I don't know what happened here and why he wasn't actually voicing the Joker. But he wasn't funny. He wasn't like a constant laughing Joker. He was quite serious and he had a quite deep voice. And he wasn't as funny and he wasn't the best at comedic timing. He wasn't good in his comedic deliveries. He was kind of an edgelord version of Joker. And I didn't really like that. It was a pretty edgy movie. But I like this version of Red Hood. Where they give him like this sort of comedy act. And he has his quips. And is very similar to Spider-Man. With these quick jokes. And these quick comebacks. 
and these Saki comments towards Batman just to sort of tease him and like let him know that he knows who he is, but he doesn't know who he is. You know, Batman doesn't know Red Hood, but Red Hood knows Batman. I like that from him. It's making it like a little game for him and that he's enjoying it. And you can see the sort of smugness in his voice that he knows what's going on and he feels like he's got a leg up on Batman and he's just like better than Batman. You can sort of see that. But with the Joker, he just kind of he's just kind of there and he doesn't really do much. He's obviously the main plot point with killing, you know, Jason, but I, I just don't like him in this movie. He isn't the Joker that I know and love. He's just, he's just there. The animation could also do with a bit of work. Most of the characters looked pretty much identical. The sort of face shape and face build, and the whole body build in general of Nightwing and Red Hood looked identical. They were practically the same person. All you had to do was put on an eye mask on Nightwing. And that would have been it. That would have, that would have been the same character. They looked no different from each other. And I, I think that's something this film could have benefited from, giving the characters some more unique designs. Especially with Bruce Wayne. He was quite boring. It just looked like a more muscular version of Nightwing. There wasn't much to differentiate all of them, other than their super suits. The super suits and super villain suits with what sort of made them different. I know that's what they wore for most of the film, but just going into it, their costumes could have been a little bit better as they were quite similar in face shape and face design. That is all. Like, everyone's face looked very similar. Alfred looked cool, though. I liked his design, and the Joker looked cool as well. His face definitely matched his voice, his sort of darker edgy aside with the sort of murder in him where he's killing Robin something that we genuinely wouldn't expect the Joker to normally do I'm gonna be honest he doesn't normally get away with killing anyone like this so it's sort of a darker side to see of him because we never see him kill anyone in the Bat family that often because obviously the plot protection that the Bat family has but he definitely does have a darker side to him here everyone thinks Red Hood is sort of like crazy and statistic from the Lazarus pit but he says he's just always been like this and I quite like that I think like him going evil not because of the Lazarus pit but because of what he saw the world to become after he died I think that's a lot better story than just oh no the pit made him bad the pit made him crazy but other than that, that's all my nitpicks, really. The story was quite interesting. I liked the story. I liked how we saw Batman slowly figure it out. And I liked Red Hood's action and us slowly figuring it out as well. If we didn't already know who he was, slowly figuring it out makes it cool as well. Because they didn't actually give his name away. They didn't actually give him away. We slowly figure it out. But again, as I already knew who Red Hood was, I was already familiar with this story and I knew who he was. So it wasn't as big of a surprise for me. But first time watches back um, all the way in 2010 would have probably been surprised by that. And I can admire that. I can admire and say a, a good design choice that was. I just wish the ending was a little bit more fulfilling. It was only an hour and 15 minutes, which actually shocked me. It was a lot shorter than I expected. But then again, movies back then aren't as long as they are now with the two-hour blockbusters that we have with pretty much every Marvel and DC movie. And then we also have the likes of Dune and Jurassic World and Indiana Jones. All these longer movies are coming out, which is making film runtime being like two hours the more of a norm than it used to be with the old ones being Lord of the Rings and they were sort of like supposed to be the longest films of the time but now we have stuff that beats that all the time but that's pretty much it I don't have much else to say for this movie so I'm going to do some self-promotion we always love a little bit of self-promotion a little birdie a little YouTube birdie has told me and pretty much spread some gossip to me that only 98% of you aren't subscribed and that is a big chunk only two percent of you are recurring viewers and are subscribed so if you're not subscribed and that subscribe button is red and you do enjoy my content and you do keep coming back for more please do press the subscribe button as it does help out the channel quite a lot and it's free and you can always do it later if you turn out you actually don't like me and i'm not creating the content that you're here for so there you go also there is a link in the description if you want more of me again if you 
do decide you like me and you want more of me, you can go check out my TikTok, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Cameo as well. Get me to say whatever you want for the low, low price of, like, I do believe it's six quid. But, yeah. Let me know what are the movies you want me to see in the comments below. There's that as well. You can use the comment section to sort of ask me to review movies, anime, and TV shows. Something that I haven't already reviewed, let me know. I'll watch it as soon as possible, and I'll get a review up for you as soon as possible. And I think I've dragged out this video long enough, so I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. I'll see you all next one. I hope you all have an excellent day, and I hope you all stay home and stay safe. Alright, bye-bye.